Look, it's got bits in it. I'm not oh. drinking that. Well, look, just fax it to me. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Any more coffee? Oh, darling, don't give in. Charles and I have decided if I divorce him, I get everything. He gets the kids. All right, then a telex. Is this instant? I think it's got radiation poisoning. Now I've got it. I feel sick. Polly, into the kitchen immediately unless you look like an urchin from Oliver, in which case get straight back to your room. Say the family that scops together stops together. Where do you think you're going? Sit down and finish your breakfast. I'll finish my breakfast. Well, sit down and wait until I finish my breakfast. You'll never see behaviour like it. Close call. Right, where have you been? If you're going to bring children up, you might as well bring them up properly. That's what I always say. Now look at that. You'd think we'd run a cafe long enough to make a decent slice of toast. Decent slices of toast are for the customers, dear. Well, and the decent eggs too, I suppose. That is addressed to me. It's from a solicitor. But well, whatever it is, we didn't do it. <laughs> Brian, it, it's addressed to the whole family. Do you think we ought to be a bit more, you know, private? Private? Whatever for? I've got nothing to do, all right? Read it out, woman. It's your uncle. Uncle Bob, he's dead. Dead? Mm. to inform you of the death in a tragic flying accident of your relative, Uncle Bob. I'm also required to inform you that he has left a considerable inheritance. And that you are invited to come to these offices for the reading of the will this afternoon at five o'clock. Your obedient servant, Mr. Henry Herewith. in the Londons, Miss Edwards, we must be impartial. Two families alike in dignity, as Shakespeare has it. Best, Mr. Herewith. Oh, yes. Sign here, please. Yes. All we ever do is sign things, we solicitors, eh? <laughs> Thank you. Mind the door. Those wretched helmets, they can't hear anything. Ah, you know what this is? Yes, two families, and neither knows the other exists. We could be in for fireworks, Miss Edwards, indeed we could. Now, let's see what the old boy has to say for himself. Henry, my dear old friend, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Oh, yes. <laughs> good, good, good. Now. Here's what I want you to do. Listen carefully. Well, I'll be. I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. I'm lost for words. I'm dumbstruck. I'm struck dumb. It is a bit of a shock. I didn't realise you cared so much about the old man, Brian. No, good riddance to the old nutcase. It's these words here, look. Considerable. And inheritance. Still, the old boy was loaded. Do we have to talk about dead people while I'm eating? You're always eating. I never liked him anyway. <laughs> Worth a fortune, though, wasn't it? Considerable inheritance, they said. He must be... A... I must be... his only relative. Sad, Mummy. I hide my grief well, darling. Let's not speak ill of the dead, Brian. I'm not speaking ill of him. He was a certifiable fruitcake. And that's a lesson for you two, by the way. Uncle Bob was as right as rain till he went to the South. That's what turned his head, you mark my that's word. That's also where he made his millions. I tell you, your southerner, he's too busy putting on his coat and hat to wash his front doorstep. Aye, as right as that. 
Of course, he spent far too much time in the north. Unpleasant habits are bound to rub off. I'll tell you what sort of chap he was. He came to our wedding in a kilt and a string vest. Maybe he thought it would be fun. You know a joke? It was no joke. He did it quite deliberately to annoy me. Those frightful Wellington boots. I still go cold at the thought. He was a spiteful old man. Oh, surely not. Just a bit bonkers. Charles, do try to concentrate. You must remember to collect the children and then collect me. We must all be there as a family. And if at all possible, a happier one. London? Great! We've never been to London before. And you're not going to go now. It's a hellhole, is London. Full of hoity-toity stuffed shirts and chinless wonders you stay in here. No, they've got to go. It says so in the letter. We all have to go. Well, they're not going to go. I'm going to put my foot down on this one. It's my duty as a parent. You put your foot where you like, you soft beggar. This could be our ticket out of here. Don't you mess it up. Yes, isn't it adorable? Perhaps Madame likes to try it in her own size. Or possibly something in red to match the complexion. Come on, come on, come on. Hello? You have reached London's of London. I'm afraid there's no one here to take your call. Charles, will you stop behaving like a fool and speak to me? Oh, Fabia, how many times have I told you not to call me at work? I'm at work, you're at home. Now shut up and listen carefully. Perhaps pink isn't quite Madame's colour. Don't want to look any more like a big wobbly remorse, do we? Marcia, do you think you could assist, madam? Of course, Mrs. Lambert. Now, you must remember to leave in plenty of time to collect the children. I should be so cross if we're late. Just for once, Charles, will you do something for me? Charles? Charles? Yes, dear? <sighs> well, madam appears to have ripped that dress to shreds. It's not very serious, I'm sure. Well, I'm afraid it's company policy to charge in full for damaged goods. Well, it wasn't really madam's fault, was it, madam? No. Oh, really? So whose fault was it then? My fault, was it, Marcia? My fault? Perhaps I should pay for it, what do you think? Or, or maybe you'd like to, hmm? No. Well, if you would just like to find Madame a pen for her checkbook and look after her for 45 seconds, do you think you could manage that? <laughs> I was on my way. And Charles? Yes? Hurry up! Take that filthy thing out your mouth. You don't understand, do you? It's a status symbol, this. People know they're dealing with a big league when they see one of these. You don't even smoke. Dad, can I have some money for a bubblegum machine? No, you can't, young lady. Just because I've come into a great amount of cash, it doesn't mean money grows on trees. I only want 10p. No. 407. It's a question of style, you see, Maggie. What are you talking about, lad? 407 steps in the station. Is there really? Well, that's good. Shut up now. You see, I walked behind Mango when they gave out the stair rods, Maggie. I mean, other folk can please themselves. You'll find your fatter guy in a bin if you show me up this afternoon. We'll see what you've got to say about that. Nathan, when the train comes, be a good boy and jump on and get your mother a seat. What about his father? Yeah, and your father. On a different train. <laughs> Listen, have you got those flouncy lace collars for me? Sorry, Gerard, missed that. Someone being silly. Great, I'll expect them tomorrow then. What's that? Uh, sorry, not an awfully good line. Oh, business. He wants you to go. Uh, sorry, Gerard. Polly, I am talking. He wants you to go first. Well, yes, obviously, I can see that. Uh, sorry, Gerard. Um, yes, would you mind? Bye. I wish you wouldn't do that when I'm talking. Where are we going? To get your mother. Why are we going down here? How very mature of you. Thank you very much, Polly. Yawn, yawn, yawn. Brian? Brian, just a minute. Wait a minute. Keep your hand on your wallets and talk to no one. Brian? 
Look, it's getting awfully late. You know, Clerkenwell's a long way. Look. Can we go on the underground? No, we can't. It's a den of vagabonds and thieves oh, look, down there. The taxi, look, we'll be late. No, we will not, will you? Shaps his pony like we always do. Brian! Brian! Charles is doing this deliberately. He knows it'll upset me if he's late. Still grubby of him. Ah! What time do you call this? Half past four? Quarter past seven. Well, this is marvellous, Charles. Marvellous. We're going to be late. What a wonderful impression we're going to make. Oh, it doesn't really matter, does it? The old boy's not going to notice. <laughs> now, it's a known statistical fact that most companies have been involved in some crime or other within the last 12 months, the ones that aren't already in jail, that is. Ryan! You see, they've no morals like us. They've got no moral backbone. They're rogues and vagabonds all. Ryan, we're going to be late! Don't fuss, woman. It's this way. Just stick with me and I'll bury you in diamonds. I know all about the North. They don't have electricity or telephones up there, and they've all got huge hands for digging coal out of the ground. And they all wear hats with headlamps on, because it's always foggy and the sun never shines. Don't be ridiculous, Julian. The sun shines every now and then. I've seen it. When were you ever up North, Charles? Well, I haven't actually been. I've seen test matches on television. <laughs> Now, this is precisely what I've been talking about. Man, the lunatic. No harm done, old chap. Anti-lock brakes, terribly gripping. These are them cockney vagabonds, Dad. Oh, no, love. No, no, no. These are your, are your rich southerners. They make their money mostly by swindling the north and bleeding us dry. They don't know the meaning of the word, hard graft. That's two words, Brian. But whatever it is, they don't know the meaning of it. Uh, be a good chap and take your delightful family across the road. We're in a bit of a hurry, so if you wouldn't mind. You see, there's them as has and there's them as hasn't. And if them as has hadn't, they'd be no better off than them as has had. And if them as hadn't had, they'd be no worse than them as has would be, whether they had or hadn't. I'm always saying that, aren't I, Maggie? Not so I've noticed, no. Well, what does it mean, exactly? Ignore him, Fabia. He's not worth it. What's the matter with him? He looks like he's got a fish stuck under his nose. <laughs> <laughs> now, just a minute. <laughs> what I want to know... Is how you intend to pay for damage. What damage? There's no damage, you odious person. <laughs> this damage. I will teach you, you stupid idiot. <laughs> I'd like to take a seat. I'm sure Mr. Herewith will only keep you a moment. Oh, Mr. London. Fabia London, Mr. Herewith. How nice to meet you. I've been so looking forward to this occasion. My condolences to you all. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Well, I'm sure you're a very busy man. Shall we get on to the money now? I, I mean the will, the reading of the will. Well, all, all in good time, dear lady. Uh, I'll be with you very shortly if you'd like to help yourself to a... Uh, um, Tea, tea, have tea, Miss Edwards, and chocolate biscuits, eh? <laughs> yes, yes, chocolate biscuits. Good, 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 good. Now then, just remember, if you get left any money in this will, I get it until you're 21, all right? Why? Well, uh, it, I don't get it exactly. I just had a look after it for you until you're 25. Now, don't look at me like that. You'll still get exactly the same amount of pocket money as you always get. I'm a fair man. Dad! No yawn. About time, too. She been to China for it? That'll do, Julian. I'm sure this person has a lot more important things to do than look after Mr. Herewith's clients. <coughs> Like biting her nails, for instance. It's Mr. and Mrs. Brian Allfield and family to see Mr. Airwith. Certainly, sir. This way. Oh, no, I don't believe it. It's the Hovis family. Eh? Oh, I see. Well, you didn't waste any time getting here, did you? Well, I'm on to your little game. All right, then, go ahead, sue me. We're not here to sue you. I'm not here to sue you, Brian. Now, huh? sit down. Small world. Mr. and Mrs. Oldfield, my deepest sympathy to you and your sad loss. 
And this must be Nathan and Victoria. Charming. Charming. Uh, please, follow me. Uh, excuse me, but we've been waiting much longer than you. No, 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 Mr. London. All of you, please, step this way. All of us? Together? With these people? Well, if you would be so kind, dear lady, yes. No cause, Miss Edwards. I may be in conflict for some time. What? You're not seriously suggesting that I am in some way related to this, this person? Don't you person me, you cheeky madam. But that's it exactly. Your Uncle Bob married twice. So you, Fabia, and you, Brian, are cousins. Oh. And Polly and Julian and Nathan and Victoria are second cousins. So you're all one big happy family. Isn't it exciting? Oh, but surely, Mr. Herewith, dear, dear Uncle Bob would have made some special provision for us. He wouldn't have wanted us to share with Riff Raff. Riff Raff? Did you hear that, Maggie? I think what my wife means, Mr. Herewith, is that we're, well, different. I mean, we know the value of money. We don't, you mean? You cheeky beggar! Like outside, go on, get outside! I'm sure you will riff raff. Oh, do be quiet, you ghastly little man! No, calm yourselves, please. Your uncle Bob was an unusual man. Although he made millions, he lived life to the full. And as his friend and his solicitor, I miss him greatly. He also made a somewhat unusual will. And uh, well, who better to explain it than the dear departed himself? If you make yourself comfortable. There you are. <laughs> Shall keep you a trice. Where's the marmalade, please? Thank you. Well, well, well. And how are you all? Are you? Good. Ah, just a tick. There we are. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, how did he become so wealthy? How did Uncle Bob get to be so filthy rich? I hear you cry. Well, mind your own business. And you're wondering, how is he going to divide his wealth? How is he going to divvy out all that delicious dosh? <laughs> well, he's not. Oh, no, don't tell me some depressing third world charity. A circus, more likely. Now. As you're all so boring and selfish and greedy, and the last lot of people I like to get stuck in a lift with, I'm going to play a little game. Yes, Bob's little game. Ha! Now, you're saying to yourselves, ooh, how does he do that? Well, I'm not going to tell you. This game is called All Change, and the rules are very simple, which should suit you lot. Allow me to elucidate, and perhaps the youngsters would like to explain that word to their parents. Now, you old fools think that anyone from the South is a nandy-pandy twit, don't you? Fair comment. Whereas you Londons think that anyone north of the M25 is a tripe-brained oik. Correct? That's rather good. I, I must remember that. Now, what you're all going to do is to completely swap lives and learn how the other half lives. Yes, you may gasp, Fabia. Tomorrow morning, first thing, houses, jobs, the lot, everything. And whichever family does best, wins all the loot. Flabbergasted, Brian? Flabber completely gasted? Of course, you can give up now if you want to, if you don't mind giving up the lolly. Uh, right, are you ready to play? Change. Well, it's absurd. You can't just uproot two whole families and count them the length of the country. He's as daft as a carrot. What about the shop? I can't just leave it to Marcia. The girl's hopeless. But you won't be leaving it to Marcia. You'll be leaving it to Maggie here. Oh, my God, it's impossible. Besides, there's a cafe. It can't survive without me. As done for the past eight years. What about the children's schools? Well, it's all arranged. It's perfectly possible, I assure you. Tomorrow morning, you swap everything. 
apart from Polly and Nathan, who will stay where they are and live in peace and harmony with their new families and help to ensure fair play. Now, you all have a copy of the rules. Any cheating, sneaking back home, trying to interfere will result in points being lost. All clear? Mum, do I have to stay? I want to come with you. You shut up. You'll do as you're told. Daddy. Ask your mother. Mummy. Quiet, Polly. I'm thinking. Mr. Oldfield. Brian. I'm sure we're all agreed this is a stupid waste of time. Surely we could come to some arrangement. Such as? Well, here. Fifty pounds to cover your rail fare. Now, why don't you all go back to wherever it is that you came from and we'll sort the whole thing out. What about the will? Well, there's a lot of legal mumbo-jumbo. We'll take care of it, won't we, Charles? Oh, yes, no problem. We'll see to everything. Oh, I'm sure you will. And that'll be the last we'll hear about it, right? Attempted bribery counts as cheating, Mrs. London. So you're starting one point down already. That's not fair. Perhaps you'd all better go before you lose any more points. Well, all right, I'll overlook it this time. But remember, please leave your lovely homes as you would wish to find them. Am I going to have to go down the mine over my dead body? Well, maybe. Wait and see. Polly, Nathan. Your great uncle thought a lot about you two, and I think he had a special plan in mind. Someone's got to keep an eye on things. You know, I can't be in two places at once, can I? I suppose there's no harm in trying, but... Will you help me out and see fair play? Do we have any choice? Oh, no, not really. That's the spirit. Good. Right, off you go. I am not having my son eating black pudding in a wretched cafe, you awful man. That great tape worm eating black pudding and plate it came on. But at least he knows how to behave. Polly, leave that child alone and come in the car now. Right, well, you think you're something, don't you, with your hoity-toity ways, you little straw hat, you great jumped-up snoop bag. And you, you pudgy, crafty designer. Well, it beats working, doesn't it? Eh? I think you'll spend all day sitting in a little bistro, eating smelly cheese and drinking wine. Come on, Brian. Eh? You wouldn't know a good pint of beer if it came out of the pub and spread itself all over you. Brian, will you be quiet? See, that's it. They've got no answer to northern bluntness. Look at them driving away. Yeah. Typical. Hey, 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 hey. There's a lesson to be learned there. Eh? I hope you learned something about your hoity-toity southerner. What's that then? You wind them up enough, they don't even notice if they've got a flat tyre. <laughs> well done, lad. <laughs> What's this? Except from tomorrow, it's your car. It's not going to be easy, is it, Mr. Hewis? <laughs> no, but it should be fun. <laughs> yes. It should be fun. <laughs>